On this episode of Travels with Bill, we're in Winnipeg, Manitoba at the Assiniboine Park Zoo for Zoo Lights. It's an amazing show. We're going to walk through the whole thing here, so it's going to take us almost an hour to do it. I'll hop in and out a little bit, but we'll give you some idea up front here of what exactly you're seeing, and then we'll look at some of the neat parts too. You know, there's over a million and a half lights at Zoo Lights this year. It's a phenomenal event. Now, it is a paid event. You do pay to get in here at $16 a person. You have to buy your tickets online, and you have to sort of schedule when you're going, too. So you sort of pick the half hour you want. For example, we came between 8 and 8.30. So as long as we arrived in that time, they let us in. That means there's not huge crowds all at the same time. It's more of a walking thing. You get to walk through it and see everything that's going on. And this is about walking. You'll need to dress up warm. The night we're filming is about minus 13 degrees, but certainly if it's colder, you'll want to be dressed up even more. Zoo Lights runs from early December until early January, so you still have a few nights to catch it in 2022, and then it's gone again, and you'll catch it in the holiday season of 2023. The Zoo Lights event is set up throughout the zoo, so you'll actually see some animals when you're here too. A little dark when we were filming, so you couldn't see them, but we saw the wolves, we saw some elk as well. You see a bunch of things, even some rabbits ran across the trail. Now it's set up with a preferred way of traveling, so if you follow the arrows, you go through a big route, and essentially you're gonna go from the south end of the zoo all the way to the north end to the Churchill exhibit, and then all the way back down, and eventually exit through the gift shop. Along the way, you'll see an amazing pile of lights. It's not just lights though. There is music in some places. Now I had to cut almost all of it out because it's commercial music and that wouldn't go so well on YouTube. So we've replaced it with some Christmas carols here so you can enjoy it. But if you're actually doing this in person, you'll hear some amazing songs that make the lights extra special. There's performers as well, plus there's several tents you can hop into to get warm. But if you want to do it the old fashioned way, there's lots of fire pits along the way too. So you can stand around the bonfire for a few minutes, warm up a bit, then see some more lights. Now, as you can tell, it did take us almost an hour to walk through here. At least that's an hour on film. It actually took a little longer. You'll see a couple little edits. For the most part though, this is a straight walkthrough. Those edits came from changing batteries and having to go back to a couple things to cut in a little piece here and there that we had missed on the first walkthrough. For the most part though, expect it to be an hour to walk through this. If you're going to stop and enjoy it, it might be two hours. So certainly go a little earlier on in the night to give yourself some time. Once you find the live music and find some of those neat places to stay warm, well, you're gonna do more than just walk through the lights. You're gonna have an entire evening of entertainment. So it's worth it. Now, kids under two are free, uh, so you can get them in a little cheaper if you need to, but for the most part, expect to pay the $16 per person. Throughout the video, you'll see lots of instances of what looks like staff members. Those are actually volunteers that are out helping out the Assiniboine Park Zoo. And they get to come out night after night and not only enjoy the lights, but be friendly with all the people too and get to meet so many visitors. Now we're touring this uh, on Boxing Day, so it's December 26th. The big crowds already went through earlier on before Christmas. This is a great time of year to come see it. Of course, if you want to see it earlier, you can. There'll just be some more people. You'll see a couple times that uh, maybe some of the venues are a little undersubscribed tonight, but it was a Monday night right after Christmas, so it's not a huge surprise. If you've watched any of our Christmas videos before, you'll know that sometimes the blue lights don't always show up perfectly. You're kind of seeing that here. The blue overwhelms the camera. It's also not quite this bright when you're walking through it. You can see the glow of the city in the sky there. Well, that's also a camera effect because we're set so you can see all the lights really good. If you were here, you wouldn't notice the sky being bright like that. You're just seeing the lights themselves. I guess what I'm trying to say is, you should come in person because no matter how good it looks on video, it looks much, much better in person because everything is absolutely sparkling and dazzling. Plus you get the crunch of the snow, the smell of the fires, the bonfires, the wood smoke is just oh, so perfect. The zoo does, by the way, have all of their little shops open so you can get some hot chocolate. There's even alcoholic beverages available. So if you wanna come out here and have some of that adult fun, you can do that too. But if you're bringing the kids, grab some hot chocolate and carry on through. I believe you can even get food if you look at the right places. Uh, so it's much the same as normal during the zoo, just no ice cream because, well, it is winter time. The ice cream is replaced with the hot chocolate. As we wander through here, you can kind of see how it's themed areas. There was some a little bit before was a theme, then we have some that are more just lights. But throughout the whole walk, you'll see various themes and various um, different motifs, I guess you could call it. 
Beard to Christmas Lights. There's lots of other Christmas light videos on Travels with Bill. Uh, we've been filming those for a couple years now, so certainly when you're done watching this one, just search for Christmas on the channel and you'll see all sorts of neat stuff from different communities across Manitoba and Saskatchewan, some of the people that made some amazing Christmas displays. None of them quite as big as this, but of course we're in the big city here, so the displays are always going to be extra big compared to what you find in maybe a smaller town. There are some animated displays here too. The first one we're going to see of that is these wolves. Now they're just looking around, but then you'll see them look up to howl a little bit, and they go back to looking around. These ones are only four or five frames of animation, but later on in the video, you're actually going to see some stuff where it's like a 10 frame animation. It looks like a bear is actually running. That's yet to come, so keep watching. Check out the balls in the trees. Isn't that cool? That would be something you could do in your front yard. Wrap the tree in red lights like that, then put the balls up. It would look amazing. There's only a couple trees here, but it looks so good. Of course, it fits in with everything else. Now you'll see some paths are blocked off a little bit. That's the direction you don't go. You just sort of keep following where all the rest of the people are going down through all of the lights. Take a quick peek at one of those uh, bonfire locations for you too. It's right along the path, so here's how it works. You just walk on over there and enjoy the fire. They've got lots of wood and a volunteer to keep the fire going, so all you have to do is stand around and get warm. It's pretty cool, and I do love that smell. It just makes everything more amazing at Christmas, the smell of wood smoke. I guess maybe that's because when I was a kid, right, I used to go someplace for Christmas that had a wood-burning fire, and so you sort of smelled that smoke, and it burns those memories in. If you never had wood burning fires, maybe it's not as important to you, but to me, it's part of Christmas to smell that smell. Well, speaking of, there's one of those volunteers coming now. I think they're on their way to go tend to the fire and make sure nobody gets too close. I'm going to leave you for a minute or two as you wander through here, but I'm going to keep hopping in and tell you about some of the neat parts we see and explain a little bit of what you're seeing too. But enjoy some Christmas music until I'm back. We're coming up to one of those spots where you can get hot chocolate plus some other stuff, a little shop there. Now it is set up for there to be a lineup, but certainly there was no lineup when we came through. It was a nice calm night with not too many people about. I can imagine this would get full though, especially when it first opens early in December and on a Friday or Saturday night. But the night we're viewing it, it's absolutely perfect.
I talked a little earlier on about some of the venues here. So here comes one of those tents. It's the first one you'll find. Now this has different shows go on. So there's a DJ just playing music at times, but at certain times of the night, there's actually a live band, which is really cool. Tonight's band, by the way, is Jace and the Hotties, and we're going to have just a very little bit of it. What was neat, though, was we were wandering through there playing the live music, and of course it comes out of the tent, so you hear their live music throughout all of these lights, too. It's amazing. Okay, let's hop inside so you can see what's actually in that tent and see if you want to go. <laughs> Remember, it's warm in here. You don't even need a jacket. Thank you, thank you. Lots of tables to stand at too. We have assembled a crowd, boys. This is what our musical lives have been waiting for. Okay. Live music at its best. Okay, there was only five of us in the tent at the time. Like I say, those busier some nights, but this would be a perfect night if you're out with your friends and family, stand around and enjoy the band. Uh, back to the walk now, and we'll see some more of the lights. This is worthy of a special mention. See how the tree is red at the bottom, then it's fireworks at the top? I don't know where you buy those, but I certainly need some. And this wouldn't be just for Christmas either. You could do this for Valentine's Day with that red theme going on. Be the only Valentine's decorated tree in your whole neighborhood, I bet. The best part though is the fireworks, they're so amazing. This is a neat spot. Now you can actually come here and stick your head in and get your picture taken with those guys. Pretty cool. But see the bear in the background? That is even cooler. Now if you count how many frames are going by there, I think my count is around 10, maybe 11 frames of animation. We get a little closer in here. As we get closer with the camera, it doesn't look as good as when we were further back there. But we'll show you how it's working. See all the rope light on the frame there? Each of those rope lights is one image of the bear, and then the little machine in there turns a different one on in order and makes it look like the bear is running. There's a few different animations like that throughout the whole thing. You'll see more of them later on. With the camera, it's always better from back further because you see it better, but in person, the closer you get, the nicer it is. Look at those trees. Each one has its sort of different color going on. The white lights make them extra special though. Now, if you're thinking this is so romantic, we just need to stop and have a little cuddle, well, there's a place for that too. Candy Cane Cove is where you and your special one, I suppose, could stop, get your picture taken, and enjoy the candy canes.
bit of a fork in the road here. So we're going to go into the Journey and Churchill exhibit for a bit. There's not a lot of lights in there, but I wanted you to see what there is. Then we'll come back and go the other way around the island here and get into some of the other stuff, including a massive igloo. In fact, you're seeing the igloo just in the background there a little bit. Journey to Churchill is one of the newer parts of the zoo. It's when they did their big redesign a few years back they built this. It's just like you're walking into Churchill. I can actually kind of imagine this might be what Churchill is like on a nice Christmassy night. A few lights here and there. And of course the stores, the airplane hangar. It's not really full of airplanes here at the zoo. There's a playground in there. Uh, worth coming in the summer to see all of this. In the wintertime though, the little store is open so you can go in there and get some stuff if you need to. We're going to turn around here right away. Head back out and get to the more lights because this is I guess you call it a detour to get in there and get some refreshments give you get warm again and then carry on along see the train car Winnipeg on one side zoo on the other side hmm you know what's coming next the northern lights So a couple things going on here. First, see the igloo off on the right-hand side? We're gonna go in there a minute and show you what's actually in there, but check out the trees. Now you think to yourself, oh, those are just strings of lights, but they're actually meant to mimic the northern lights. See how they're shimmering and coming and going? Well, look at them here for a bit. When they all light up, it's spectacular. They're RGB bulbs. So each one has a separate address. There's a computer controlling all of this and making them look this way. As you can imagine, when they sent the astronauts to the moon the first time their computer wasn't nearly as good as the computer that's actually running this light show here tonight check it out though it can address each and every one of those bulbs separately so it can make every single one a different color it can turn them off and on at different times it can do groups of them and it can make them shimmer just like the real northern lights except maybe even a little brighter i don't think these ones respond if you whistle at them either this is another one of those times where I wish the camera could do it justice, but there's just so much change going on here at the same time that it's tough for the camera to pick it all up. Another reason to come in person, obviously. Look at them though, it's so cool. They all change in different colors and then they just all turn off and it's so dark, then back again. See the fire burning in the distance there? That's another one of those warm up spots so you can stop in and have a little bit of a bonfire. The old fashioned way to warm up. Uh oh, the Northern Lights are going away. Just like they do sometimes at night. And off they go. And then there they are back. we go to the giant blown up igloo now this is actually an inflatable tent so this is a tent but uh, inflated and i think that helps it keep warm there is some heat in here now these i said before not jacket weather certainly you would usually wear a jacket in here anyway but it's warm enough that you notice the difference that one we were in before with the live band it was even warmer than this one though it's not bad uh, this is put on by the winnipeg airport authority they're celebrating of course they now have direct flights from winnipeg to lax that's a big deal because that brings hollywood right to winnipeg and as you know lots of movies already filmed in winnipeg but having those direct flights makes it even easier to film movies here as you get all the big name stars all the way up to winnipeg easy as can be one flight instead of having to trade planes different places worth it uh, again here there's some i think there's actually drinks going on in the bar look at the disco ball up on the ceiling though amazing eh? now, this particular tent doesn't have live music but it's got a dj that's always playing music and i can tell you it was really good music it's the kind of music even i would like i just can't share it with you in the video because it's copyright music and we don't have permission to use it here uh, with the synchronization license but trust me it's there and it's amazing it's not christmas music either it's really good pop type music You'll enjoy it. 
Uh, we have to kind of turn around here now because we've reached the far north end. In fact, right behind us is a road. So we're going to go back through the northern lights. You're going to notice a slight edit because, well, it takes a lot of batteries to film something in the cold. And then we're going to carry on and start walking south again. We're about halfway through the exhibit so far, but lots more yet to come. Honorable mentions here for the under the sea part. Now this is trees, of course, but look how the blue lights make it look like water. And then there's fish there. There's even a scuba diver taking a little swim. I see an otter swimming by. Oh, and even more fish, a whole school of them up at the top there. It's a very cool display. It's got nothing to do with Christmas, but it's made out of Christmas lights. And of course, in the winter with the snow, it's just so special. You see the kid with the orange jacket? Yeah, you're gonna see a lot of him. He, by the way, is a very busy child and well, you're kind of walking through with a group of people, right? And so we stop and film and do things, but you'll see him show up over and over and over again. And you'll see him touching everything too, because he's one of those kids that just can't let it go and walk by. He's got to give every single thing a poke. While his mom was maybe getting a little bit upset with him, but she made it through too. Certainly a place you should bring the kids, even when they are busy like he is. gonna hop into tundra trail here now this is more of a themed exhibit and you might recognize this from where the different traveling shows come to the museum i've been through here when there were dinosaurs i've been through here when there was giant insects this is the part where they kind of change things out and make it so you want to keep coming back well tonight it's full of christmas lights uh, all sorts of different themes here and there's this wonderful walkway we're coming up to i'll let you just watch through most of this uh if you want the fun part though 
just keep watching for the kid with that orange jacket. You'll see him throughout this entire section of the video as he comes and goes and gets in the way and runs and comes back and well, you know how kids are. That's part of Christmas, isn't it? If you really want some fun, count how many lights are about to go by in this little tunnel. Isn't it so cool? Look at the blues and the greens. It's amazing.
If you're a purist and looking for an absolute perfect walkthrough, you're going to be mad right away. There's a bit of a jump cut. So as we come out of here, we're just going to jump to the other side of the road and then come back across this little path. Uh, you see the bear is running in both photos. We've just kind of changed where we are here uh, in relation to the rest of the lights because we had to do the battery thing again. Uh, but then we'll keep on going on the walk. And for the most part, it's going to be uncut after this because I think we make it all the way through. Now this wonderful path here, you can already see the little dots in the snow. Those are laser projectors and this entire walkway is full of them. In fact, you'll see all those little rainbows of lights. It's so cool to see all the colors of them. And when we pan up here a little bit, you'll see how it just goes forever. We walk down this entire path and all the way your feet are just full of those little things. There's a little shot of where we came from. So you get your bearings again. Tundra Trail is just there with those red lights. And then we carry on down the path walking. Some of the kids are actually stomping on those little things, trying desperately to see if they can get them with their foot. Of course, it doesn't work. They just get away. Almost like a cat chasing a laser pointer, isn't it? Except it's children. Well, you just never know. Uh, on the left side, you're seeing just the back side of that tent. That's the one with the live entertainment. So we've sort of come around that big circle like we were talking about, heading back south now. And we go through all of this. It's not as curvy a path this way because we're walking on what was actually a road in the zoo. Uh, but we'll go all the way down it and eventually get to the exit. We're going to take a little detour off of the straight path. By the way, there's the washrooms. If you need to find a washroom, one of many spots in the zoo that have them for you. We're going to go across the little bridge here and check out some of the trees. They're dancing away too. Not all of them change colors and dance, but some do. And it's just enough to make it extra special. You can walk out here. Certainly there's not as much trail here as there is in the other parts, but the snow isn't too deep. And if you stick to the mark trail, you'll see the little hoops. It's uh, packed down really well, so you can go through the hoops and kind of explore the trees. It's cool, and it's just more and more lights. I'm having a hard time believing there's only a million and a half lights here. It certainly feels like more than that.
That's kind of a neat moose, isn't it? Do you like love? Love in the winter, maybe? How about pink and white love lights? Well, actually, this whole exhibit, uh, this one is set up for love. Now, I can't play the music again, but it's playing all love songs all night long. So certainly a place to come and hold hands and gaze into each other's eyes. And Well, okay, maybe if you've been married a while, you won't be doing that. But if you're young and silly, you might think it's a really great idea. There's a neat spot to take a photo with here, too. Uh, we'll come around to it in a second. There it is. See the big love sign? It's big. Uh, we'll come a little closer to it later, but see the people there? Yeah, it's really big. This, by the way, is where the butterflies normally are in the summertime. Uh, they've got the covers off of the greenhouses right now, but in the summer, they'd have them on, and you'd be butterflies all over in here. We'll walk in in a second to get through those lights, and you'll sort of see how we're going through some drapes. Those are the drapes that keep the butterflies in in the summertime. They're still here in the winter, and you might think, oh, it's trying to keep it warm in there. No, it's not warm in there at all, uh, but you do need to go through the drapes. I guess they couldn't remove them, uh, so it didn't work too well. Let's hit it in. See, there's the drapes you go through, and then you're into the middle again. Very cool in here, too. Lots of lights, lots of places to take pictures. And certainly if you're taking pictures, uh, well, make sure to turn your flash off, because it's not going to work as good. But with the flash off, most cameras should be able to take pictures here pretty good. It's bright enough that you won't get just all black. And doing the video thing, as you can see, it's working out pretty well, too. We do have our camera set up for Christmas lights. We worked on that for a little while, which is why sometimes things actually seem brighter than they are. But it's working out for us. Hopefully you're enjoying the tour.
got about five minutes of the tour left here, but I wanted to show you these uh, and sort of give them an honorable mention because it's the prairie dogs. They're digging some holes and you can even see how they seem to have some tunnels under the snow. The lights glowing through from what must be lights under the tunnels. Check these guys out. Aren't they so neat? Some of them just the head sticking out, some the whole thing. And then of course, a couple of them play in there up on top. And in the distance, you'll see that horse galloping. That's another one of those LED animations that has when you get close, you'll see it. All the different rope lights hooked together and then the computer just cycling through them fast as it can go to make it look like the horse is running. A little shot of the trees there too. I want to make sure you see both sides because it is decorated both sides and sometimes we kind of look at one side and not the other. Let me give you a little view there of just how far we've come. You can see the lights on the far side. That's where we were walking earlier. And then we carry on down this path as we work our way towards the exit. Uh, let's go take a quick peek at that horse so you can see how it's working. As we get a little closer in here, it gets harder to see the horse and easier to see the rope light. See all the different rope light on the frame? These are just metal frames with metal mesh on them. And then they tie those lights to them. You can see the controller there and then all the extension cords go off across to it. Yeah, it's just flat as flat could be. But when you put it all together and turn the lights on in the right order, the horse is running. That building you're seeing up ahead, that is the exit. So we've come full circle here now. That's where we started out. We got our tickets scanned in there and came on out. I'll pat around a little bit here just so you can see sort of where we started and where we came from. Thanks for taking the tour with us. I know you may have fast forwarded a little bit, but if you didn't, you certainly had a good tour. I do want to say though, we're certainly not trying to replace you coming here yourself. This hopefully has got your appetite ready to go out and take a walk in the cold and see all these lights in person. If you're someplace where you can't make it to the Winnipeg Zoo, well now you've seen what you're missing and maybe next year you'll be able to find your way to Winnipeg and take this tour in person. It's certainly worth it. Zoo Lights has been going on for a while now. It gets a little better every year. They add a little more. That igloo we saw earlier, that's actually brand new this year. So it's one of the new attractions. Bring your friends, bring your family. Do make sure to check out their website though at the Assiniboine Park Zoo. You'll find out all about the tickets and how those work and make sure you get it right. It's open almost every night. It's closed a couple nights this year because it was so extremely cold. But for the most part, it's always here. There's the exit sign. Check out those trees, by the way, inside the entrance. Aren't those so cool? They're indoors, but it's not particularly warm in there. Here's a shot from inside so you can see them better. We already walked through the gift shop, but I figured there wasn't really Christmas lights in there. You probably didn't want to see that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up button, and if you're looking for more Christmas, just search on the channel. You'll find lots more Christmas videos. You'll also find videos of all sorts of other interesting things as we travel across Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and all of Canada, showing you some of the neatest things this country has to offer. Farewell for now from the Assiniboine Park Zoo and Zoo Lights. We'll see you next time on Travels with Bill.